Friends, I welcome you to basic technology class. The topic we have today is motions in engineering system or mechanical systems. And before we go into the lesson, then we'll look at the lesson objective. What you're supposed to learn at the end of the lesson. The number one in the performance objective is at the end of the lesson, you're supposed to explain the types of motions and applications in the engineering system. Then two, you should be able to explain the need to convert rotary motion to linear motion and their applications. Now we begin with the topic, motions in engineering system. We go into defining the terms. Engineering system has to do with any system where machines undergo different types of motions to achieve or to exhibit a, a desired task or to accomplish their task. That is engineering system. And we have these systems in our houses, anywhere around us, even in classroom. These systems are there. And we can look at some of them that we have in our houses. We have sewing machine, it's engineering system. We have uh, vices that we use in the laboratory. We have uh, turbines, gas turbine, uh, steam turbine. We have conveyors, we have bicycles, we have washing machines. They are all systems that exhibit one level of motion before the desired task can be gotten. Then we'll go into another definition of motion. In physics, we have a different kinds of motion, but we still go, go through the normal definition. The motion has to do with any change of position is detailed by any object. Motion has taken place. If any object changes its position, that is motion. But if any object is at a, a standstill state, no motion undergoes. For instance, the wall. The wall is always static. It remains there. So the wall does not exhibit uh, any motion. That's definition. Then we go into types of motion in engineering. In physics, we have uh, four types of motion in physics. We have linear motion in physics. We have a rotary motion, which we call circular motion or rotational motion. Then we have a vibratory motion and we have a random motion, zigzag movement. But in an engineering system, we limit these four motions in physics into two. In the engineering system, they will not concentrate on linear motion and rotary motion. That is to say, in the engineering system, we have only major two types of motions, the, ro the rotary and the linear. And these motions can only be exhibited or possible in the engineering system where there are linkages, where there are links, or some parts being linked together to another part. That is the only point we can actualize these two types of motions in engineering. These links are lever and linkage. That's A, two slides and the slots. Then we'll go to linear motion, which is one of the types of motions we mentioned earlier. By definition, linear motion is any motion on a straight line or straight path. Any motion is been by any machine that is on a straight line, that is linear motion. Even as I'm standing before you, as I walk along the path, that is linear, because it is straight, I'm exhibiting linear motion. With me, why I'm not a machine, I'm a human being. Then this linear motion can equally be up and down movement. We compress it, because in physics, the up and down movement is vibratory motion. But we now put, because that vibration has to do with the same line, of movement. So we're not compressing it as a linear motion in engineering uh, system. Then by example, the machines that is with linear motion. Then one, which we normally do, loosening and tightening of knots. 
of any boat. As you are losing knots, it's going around at the same time, going straight. It's either it's going down or it's going up, or it's coming up. That is linear motion. The another one we commonly do is pulling and pushing of locker drawers, which you do in your hostess, even at home. Just check your locker or table lock. You pull the drawer and you push. That pulling and pushing is linear on the straight line. The bicycle pump, for some of you that have bicycle at home, sometimes your pump can, uh, you know, the, the tire can be deflected. Then for you to put air into it through the pump, we push the pump forward and backwards. That movement is linear. Then we talk about bench vice. Bench vice, uh, you should be able to know that it's a machine that we use to grip objects for sewing or for cutting. So in that bench vice, when you move, make a movement on it of some part, the jaw will open in a sliding form. As the jaw opens, then as the jaw opens, what happens? You put the material in between and you tighten up. The jaw will slide and closes and grip the material. Then you can do your cutting. Then we will have a slide door. This one is very common in your houses. You have slide doors, you pull your door. That movement of the door or the slide, as well as the louver doors or the glass doors, they are all linear. What of windows? The slide windows. You slide the windows, that is also linear. These are the exact, or even gates. Big gates we have in our compound. Sometimes we push the gate from one end to the other. That movement is also linear motion. Then having said that, let's not even pistol. We're talking about pistol in engine, in engine system. Before the engine will start, the pistol will make a move in the combustion chamber that is being ignited by a plug, spark plug. So when the burning is there, the heat that is generated in the system will make the pistol to move. And that movement is up and down movement. Pistol in the in 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 motor engine. Then having said that, we now move to the lever we mentioned before. And lever and the linkage these are the two devices that enable us to really achieve the straight line movement by machines. The lever, the lever and the linkage. Then we go by the lever. What does it mean? Lever is any mechanical device. Use a moving object, or you can move the object, you can lift it, you can bring it down with less effort. It doesn't require much effort, just little handling. You see the object lifting, lifting up a heavy load. That is lever, and the such movement is always a, a straight line movement. And we have a linkage. Linkage is also a mechanical device. Used to allow forces and motions to be transmitted where they are needed. And for, for us to look into it, the linkage has a lot of lever connections on it that will now make the motion to be actualized and also directing the motion from one part to another. And at the same time, it can equally change the type of motion by conversion from one part to another. That is linkage. The examples of lever and the linkage are one, slider crank mechanism. It's a machine that we're going to explain. Then two, we have a lifting jack which we all know, the jack we use, our daddies, our mommies use in lifting their car to change the, the tire when it is deflected, we have crane, we have pulley system. In a simpler way, the link mechanism is what we have on the board. The sketch of it, we have a lever, which is AB. The lever, then we have a connecting rod, BC and we have a slider, C. This, this point slides to and fro. Then this lever here rotates, makes a 360 degree movement, that rotation. And half of that rotation drags the slider forward. 
the other half will push it backward on a guided straight line movement. And if it moves faster, the slider will probably be moving to and fro uh, faster. And with that movement, we can actualize so many things. We can use it to sieve rice, we can use it to sieve granite to remove dust because it is shaking the, the beans. When it is shaking to and fro, then the dust or the chaff from rice from beans will start dropping. And also there might be a fan by the side that can blow off the other chaff. That is a, a slide mechanism, the twelve flow movement. And these are the explanations that we can get in touch with it. The other example of the linkage is the lifting jack that we use in our cars. In the lifting jack, we have a point A, we have point B. Then after you listen today, go and check your father's uh, boat, then you will see the lifting jack there. In that jack, B is the handle. When you turn the B in a rotational movement, then the jack will start moving upwards. That's the base A. We start lifting up, going upwards. And when you turn the B, maybe anti-clockwise, then the jack will start going down. And that movement up and that movement is taken as a straight line movement. That is linear motion. But in physics, that up and down movement can be taken as a vibratory uh, movement. But you put them together. That's uh, all we have in terms of uh, the jack and how it can be handled. Other devices that can give us linear motion, we have uh, slides and the uh, slots. Then this device, we can find them easily in our door locks. The door lock, at the back of the door, there's a push. And there's opening where you slot in. So that movement goes into a slot. That's a slot and a slide movement. And those opening your door with a, a key by the side. Even the normal padlock, it doesn't the same slide movement. As you just turn the, the padlock, the key, then it opens. And that opening coming up is also a straight line movement, or when you press it down, is a, a straight line movement. Then we have uh, other examples, the slide of doors, windows, gates, as we said before, even the way line. It's a straight line movement because it's, it's guided by that ray. That guide makes it to move in a straight line. Then we have a door lock, as we said, and uh, dry locks. All this is bit of um, linear motion through slides and uh, slots. Then we move to another uh, type of motion, which is a uh, rotary motion. In this rotary motion, as it implies, it's motion about a fixed point, about a center. I will have so many devices that can exhibit such motion. Even your house, you have them. And the number one is the work clock. Then two, the electric ceiling fan you have. It rotates. Another device, the washing machine has a rotatory part. The movement and the sound you're hearing, that movement is rotary movement. Your DVD you have inside it, there are a lot of uh, rotary motions taking place. Then the bicycle you use, the wheel, the movement of the wheel is rotary. The car, the movement of the tire is rotary movement. So we have so many devices that can give us a, a such a motion. As we said, then we have a types of rotary uh, motion. There are two types. One is one way rotary motion. Another way is a reversible rotary motion. In one way rotary motion, that movement is directed to move either clockwise direction only without anti clockwise direction. So if the machine is designed to move in a clockwise direction, no time can it be allowed to move in anti clockwise. For it, for, for that machine to really exhibit the needed touch is supposed to. Uh, uh, present. 
And what to such examples, we have silicon fan. Silicon fan moves only in clockwise direction. And uh, you have not seen any silicon fan moving in the anticlockwise direction where it is really operational. Even the work clock, the work clock moves in one way rotary movement. As it is moving clockwise direction, it continues. It doesn't move uh, anti clockwise uh, direction. There are several of them that uh, is this such motion. Even when you are riding a bicycle, it goes in that direction alone and alone. Then that is a uh, uh, one way rotary motion. Then we have a reversible rotary motion. These ones, they can move clockwise direction and at the same time can equal of term anti clockwise direction. So check your washing machine. It is with these two motions at a time. Your washing machine, as you turn it, it will rotate around clockwise direction. After some timing system, it will now move in the clockwise direction. That is an example. And also our car, the car you put in a reverse gear, it goes backwards. That's a reversible rotary motion. Because in one time it was moving forward. In another time you stop the car and put your reverse gear, it begins, it begins to go backwards. That's also um, reversible rotary motion. Okay, in the explanation, as we were saying before about uh, one-way rotary motion, they will have uh, examples as we listed before. We can recap them. One is electric fan, grinding machines, work clock or your wristwatch. We have a milling machine. Um, we have a uh, other machines that can equally help a one-way rotary motion. Uh, you can remember some of them in our houses. Um, we can think of, uh, if you open the video machine, then there are a lot of uh, rotary movements in that machine. They are all one-way. And they are being guided by gear so that they cannot reverse easily. But in terms of a, a, a reversible rotary motion, these machines, as we said before, they move clockwise direction and also anti-clockwise direction. And those machines will have a fork lift that can lift an object upwards and also come down. That movement up and down, it has a, a rotatory movement that is making that a straight line move upward. That rotatory movement goes forward and backwards. They will have our cassettes. Many of you might not know it. We use this cassette in playing our radios those days. We have audio, we have a, a visual that we use in playing our uh, video um, machines. We have brakes, they're all reversible. We have clutches, we have a drilling machine. Hand drilling machine, you turn around, sometimes you equally move it backwards. And we will have uh, our manual grinding machine you have in your kitchen. The manual grinder you use in grinding paper. If it moves in clockwise direction, you can equally reverse it to anti clockwise direction. So that's what we have there. Then the next one is uh, how we can convert this type of motion to another so that we can have uh, desired attacks to be done. And uh, one of the conversion of rotary to linear. That's to say, you start the machine with rotary, but the end part of it will give us a linear, and that will give us a, a desired tax that uh, can help us to achieve what we have. Then one of, of it is door lock. In door lock, you make a move, you turn either leftwards or rightwards. That turning, though it's, it's, not, it's, a, it's not a complete uh, rotary, but it has the other way it turns. But what you see at the end of it is linear. The padlock will open upwards. And when you want to close it, you can press. That is a conversion. We have our table vise. In table vise that grip an object, as you turn the, the, hand, the, the handle, clockwise direction, the jaw of the vise will open. It opens, it lies in linear direction. Then you put the object that you want it to grip. As you put the object, you turn again, 
in anticlockwise direction, it will close up and grip the object. That is uh, an example of a uh, conversion of rotary to linear. We equal have a G-clamp. Like, can equally grip an object? We can see that in physics, uh, standing uh, rods that can hold test, uh, test tube and uh, all the rest. We turn them in clockwise direction and at the same time, moving them in anticlockwise direction. We don't want to lose them. Another one is uh, the screen of boats, nuts on a boat or screw that's holding two surface objects together. Then that screw, that screw, we call it a, a temporary fastening. As you go on the screw, you are turning the screw around, and what is happening? It is moving in a straight line direction. It is moving inwards, straight. So the motion is beated has now been transferred or transformed to linear. That's an example. Even the knot will tighten to a boat. It's still the same way. You turn the knot round, that is a rotary. And what you are seeing at the other feet is a linear motion. Then we move to another session where we can convert a linear to rotary. And what can give us that conversion is piston we find in engine. And this is a, a sketch of it. We have a plug, we have a chamber, a fuel chamber that can burn. And this is the piston. We have a connecting rod and we have the crank. And what happens when the spark plug sparks and the fuel from the valve goes into the chamber through a little open of air to come in? there will be an ignition in this chamber. And that ignition will now produce a heat effect. And that effect, a heat effect, will turn this piston to move. This piston will move up and down continuously. And that up and down movement will now be transferred to the crank. This crank will start exhibiting rotary motion that can transfer to the, the car wheel or the car tire and you see rotary, but it started from the engine by up and down movement, which is uh, uh, linear. And we have other systems too that can interrupt such movement. Let me say, if an object is running on a rotary form, there are devices can equally stop those uh, uh, movement. And those uh, devices will have a, a brake system. Brake system can stop any movement any rotary movement, we see it in car. As the car is moving, the tires are moving, immediately you apply brake, the brake will interrupt the movement of the car in a simpler way. We will have a clutch system. In clutch system, we have the gear. The clutch system will enable the gear to expand so that you'll be able to engage a new gear or to stop the car. These are the examples of other devices that can interrupt a rotary motion. And these are the assignments you have to work on based on what we have learned today. The number one is the bank vice operates by converting dash motion to dash motion. Then two, list five machines that can perform linear motion. Three, the movement of pistol in a bicycle pump is dash motion. Four, motion in a straight line can be obtained by dash and dash. And lastly, number five, the term used to describe motion in a circular part is dash. Thank you for listening. We we'll meet again in the next series. Stay safe, wash your hands, apply for a sanitizer, don't move anywhere and anyhow, and God will save us from COVID-19. Thank you.